Good afternoon. My name is Sam Walker. I'm presenting Cracking the Fra Mauro Map for Abasa, Ethiopia, Revealing Berara, the Lost African Medieval City. In the first half of the 1400s, a master cartographer monk from Venice named Fra Mauro was commissioned to create a new world map utilizing the latest findings and travel accounts from merchants, ambassadors, and explorers across the Mediterranean region, the Middle East, and parts of Asia and Africa. Thankfully, concerning Nabasia, Ethiopia, this region was sketched by the very hands of intrepid sojourners from these furthest reaches of our globe. The circular map, nearly two meters across, appears to have served as more than simply an aid in expediting navigation or exploration. Rather, it looks to be designed specifically as laying the foundation for a new European, primarily Christian, world order. In drafting distinct geographical features, Framaro identifies possible alliances alongside real and potential threats. Anything Christian, even the thinnest web of connectivity, is emphasized. Each city stands fortified, bound by copious notes on regions, rulers, and rivers, and where gold and spice or pearls and fresh water can be found. Ships identifiable with the dominant traders of the day ply their respective seas. Our team focused upon this transmitted geographical information, along with manuscripts from these regions and periods. Working alongside local, state, and federal partners, we too attempted to carefully, as Fra Mauro had done, verify the texts by practical experience. Regarding these regions specifically, Fra Mauro states in inscription number 98, because to some it will appear as a novelty that I should speak of these southern parts, which were almost unknown to the ancients, I will reply that this entire drawing from Saito, which is Asut in Egypt, upwards, I have had from those who were born there. These people were clerics who with their own hands drew for me these provinces and cities, rivers and mountains, and with their names. All these things I have had, I have not been able to put in due order for a lack of space. That phrase lack of space echoed six centuries on. These medieval icons of mountains and rivers on the Frau Mara map, therefore, along with descriptions and names of now long lost cities, provide only a glimpse of the complexity that existed, not the whole. Utilizing a digital copy of our region, I set out to discover buried cities many believed never even existed. My first task was to employ an Afrocentric indigenous frame of geographical referencing for any ongoing research. To untangle the provinces of Abasia, Ethiopia, required I first utilize identifiable geographical features. Existing cities included Aksum and Tigre, and the four tributaries of the Tikaze River near Lalibela. Lake Tana and Abay, Ethiopia's Blue Nile, are clearly marked. Further south, features such as the Awash, with Mount Zikwala and Lake Zwai, are clearly designated. But could I read current landscapes back through the centuries and interpret physical geographies from that era using Google Earth images? Testing my hypothesis required I physically locate and identify a medieval site on the Frau Mauro map, yet long forgotten and lost for centuries. By the end of the 16th century, the conflicts between the Islamic forces of Imam Ahmed of Harar and the variably named Christian Kingdom of Shoah had cooled to an uneasy smoldering detente. Mass migrations prompted by these religious wars had initiated an influx of new cultures and languages. Alternate land use, new settlement patterns, and distinct agro-pastoralism practices across Ethiopia's landscapes have over the centuries literally plowed the ruins of once thriving metropolises into the ground. Sparse villages now dot the landscapes where once thriving urban centers dominated. It was indeed as if the cities depicted on the Frau Mara map never existed. Undaunted, I pressed on. Placed names recorded on old maps in various chronicles and hagiographies and Crawford's indispensable Ethiopian itineraries amply illustrate that prior to these religious wars, populations from divergent cultures lived in mixed settled communities throughout Ethiopia, much as they do today. Frau Marl states that certain regions, mountains, even cities had variant names depending upon the people groups living nearby. My first hurdle required demythologizing maps for the subsequent centuries, many which retained the fanciful narratives and mystical topography of Africa's interior, including fabled beasts, the mountains of the moons, and of course, Prester John. 
The second hurdle involved interpreting the geopolitical political ramifications wrought by the desolation of years of war. Accounts of the destruction of Brara and other cities depict that demolition was total. The main obstacle, however, was remained the paucity of true scholarship related to these sites and subsequent mis misrepresentations and misreadings of existing data. Unfortunately, Crawford never set foot in Ethiopia. Consequently, he wrongly attributed the site of Mount Bororo to the lost city of Barara. And he quotes Marquardt in 1913 as identifying mountain Toto with the mountain north of Barara. Crawford states, the only objection I can see to identifying this mountain with Barara is that it is not actually on the Dukem River, but 16 miles to the southeast of it. He then states the Dukem rises on the slopes of Mount Yarar, 16 miles to the northwest of Borara. Ironically, this is exactly where we found substantial sites with period-specific cultural materials, large architectural features, and retained oral traditions. This also means distances logged from Crawford's Barara would inevitably be skewed. Added to this is a Western bias toward identifying the strategic and security needs of mid 15th century Ethiopian cities, only to hilltop fortifications within massive walled structures. Misidentification of sites was inevitable, leading to structures on mountain Toto and high points in and around Addis Ababa to be wrongly attributed to the Frau Mara cities. These sites are small, single walled features of later date with limited to no occupational soils, no vernacular architecture or features, and no period-specific cultural materials of any kind. Given Addis Ababa's modern status, the perception persists that it must have had medieval importance as well. Additionally, most recent searches have been conducted by non-archaeologists with little to no training in remote sensing, comprehensive survey, site identification, or ceramic typologies. These compounding errors meant that most searches for sites listed on the Frau Mara map were consistently 20 to 30 kilometers off. To prove we no longer were living in terra incognita, however, I set out to discover the city of Barara, lost to all record and memory for five centuries. I created a template for site identification. Like words borrowed from an archaic vocabulary, I translated the icons of mountains and rivers not simply as elements of physical geography, but as mental constructs framed through a medieval African mind's eye. Mentioned throughout Europe's medieval period as the capital of Abyssinia, Barara had remained a mystery. Strikingly, local chronicles never mentioned that name, but it is, was it possible that this was an example of a city retaining different names based upon population? Barara had eluded explorers for centuries. Indeed, it took us a year of denials and bureaucracy and even at one point being run off at gunpoint before finding our ultimate prize. Here I wish to recognize two gentlemen scholars, the late Richard Pankhurst and Hartwig Brotternitz. Working with fellow archaeologists David Mitchellmore from the UK and Dr. Ayele Toregen from Cambridge University, our search recorded substantial archaeological and cultural materials within a radius of 50 kilometers from Addis Ababa. I also wish to reference Dr. Guluma Gimida's well-considered analysis. These many sites clearly illustrate a complex mosaic of multicultural contexts going back to prehistory, repeating Fra Marl's statement regarding a lack of space. All these and more await proper research from professionally trained field management experts. After every field walking survey, I returned to the maps as new clues emerged. It was then I discovered a singular error. The blue three-peaked mountain of the Frau Maron north of Brara was not in Toto. Tucked away in the series of valleys north of the Kesem and Gormema River lies a region aptly named Sost Amba, Three Peaks. This three-peaked mountain range starts at Mount Bera at 3,200 meters, just northwest of Sindaf, and continues upslope to the middle peak at the Fiche Genet Pass, 2,800 meters, all the way to Deber Burhan, and remains the main trade route into the highlands. Having traipsed this region multiple times and viewed it from the air, each peak is clearly defined as depicted on the Frau Mara map, just as his informants drew them. I fully recognize the sensitivity of this discovery, which is why we have been painfully methodical in all of our investigations. For peoples in the past, the topography of Addis Ababa was inhospitable to networks of trade or easy passage. It was for this reason post-medieval rulers selected in Toto, not for commerce, 
but for defense. As to Barara, our initial assessment indicates the main site covers more than two square kilometers with large quantities of period specific cultural material along with wheel made and imported pottery shards as found in the Elodian Christian medieval capital of Soba in Sudan. True occupational soils, thick ash layers, large architectural features, included poss including possible fortification foundations, two water systems, five cemeteries from different periods and cultures, one containing hundreds of tombs, proves this is a substantial site fitting all the criteria for a city the size and importance of Barara. Oral traditions and place names also fit exactly what we have sought. Bar, meaning gate, and as Mount Yarar is locally called, Ara, would indicate that this is the gate to the region of Ara or Bar Ara. Wedicha, the local name of the site, translates as the assembly of multitudes, retaining the importance this region held in earlier times. In the Encyclopedia Ethiopica, Yarar is considered the center of, Ethiopian, of Ethiopia and tradition states that medieval emperors such as Yukuno Amlek, Zara Yaakov and Lebne Dengel frequented Yarar as one of their favorite royal camps. Earlier references also indicate Mount Yarar's importance as legend states that Kings Abraha and Asdaha built seven churches here and established Deber Yarar as their seat of government. From a professional archeological standpoint, the sites, the sites we have identified as the probable location of Barara is exactly what we would expect for a city with pre-medieval, medieval and post-medieval occupational contexts. Today, the villagers atop the knoll are mixed Christian and Islamic communities. Additionally, it is exactly where Fra Mara's informants claimed it to be. The consistent misreading of a map notwithstanding, Barara is clearly indicated as directly south of Sostamba, east of the bend of the Akaki River, northwest of the confluence of the Dukem and the Mojo Rivers, and west of the fertile Titch Plain. The many newly identified sites our team has discovered contain fantastic archaeological value and potential. The mantra that Addis Ababa or the ruins on Ntoto secretly hide Africa's largest lost medieval city appears to have been fabricated upon frightfully wrong readings of an old map. Our team of professional archaeologists and local expert, experts has diligently worked directly with the ministry and bureau heads of culture and tourism for well over two years. This scholarly research requires we continue to work with local, state, and federal partners to ensure this information is utilized for the benefit of all Ethiopians. Going forward, the discussion should be about how we tie the broader, full archaeological record to the facts on the ground. This is a story of the continuity of the weaving of an intricate and vibrant tapestry of Ethiopianness from the prehistory through to the present. These discoveries provide a promising beginning. Using our research template, we continue to seek and identify lost cities and ruins strewn across Ethiopia's magnificent and varied landscapes. Regarding our regions in Africa, then, it appears the Frau Mara map has proven itself a prescient icon of a mappa mundi, requiring professionals to interpret and decode this medieval African geography. Questions inevitably remain pertaining to the poorly understood complexities of ancient and medieval studies within Ethiopia and broader regional contexts. Within its current conflicts, Ethiopia must be reminded of the larger, deeper significance of its history and heritage and take its rightful place in the histories of civilizations. The traditional narrative of selecting only Aksum or Lalibela or Gondor or Addis Ababa as the definitive and only history of Ethiopia limits her capacity to address current growing pains toward a modern nation state. The mysterious forgotten past that paints all of Ethiopia's landscapes in myriad colors of the impossible should inspire, not divide. To better understand our commonality and, and connectivity beyond modern or traditional boundaries, we must investigate, validate, and honor indigenous self-perceptions within linguistic, historical, regional, and individual frameworks. All this will benefit all will benefit from the cross-pollination of worldviews originating within this wide-ranging local historical discourse. Thank you for your time and your kind consideration.